Welcome to this introductory video series on web authoring in Tableau Online. In this video series, you will learn how to create the Executive Overview interactive dashboard shown here. Along the way, you will also learn fundamental Tableau concepts and terminology. You can download the files below to follow along in your own Tableau Online account. Tableau Online is Tableau's self-service analytics platform fully hosted in the cloud. Within your preferred browser, navigate to online.tableau.com. If you don't yet have an account, sign up for a free trial. When signing in, first enter your email address. Enter your password and click on Sign In. You now see the home page of your Tableau Online site. A site is a place for your team to create, manage, and share content with one another. If you have access to multiple sites, you can switch between sites using the drop-down menu at the top left. You create Tableau dashboards and visualizations inside of workbooks. Create a new workbook. Choose whether to connect to data sources on this site, upload files from your computer, connect to on-premises and cloud data sources, or make use of the dashboard starters. To build the Executive Summary dashboard, click on Files and upload the sample Superstore file from the location where you saved it on your computer. The data source page appears. The left pane shows that the Sample Superstore spreadsheet consists of three worksheets and three named ranges. Drag the orders table to the canvas. If you make a mistake at any point, click the Undo button at the top left. Below the canvas is the data grid. Click on Update Now to display the first 1,000 rows of data from the orders table. Tableau automatically identifies the data type of each column. For geographic fields, Tableau automatically identifies the geographic role. Drag the returns table onto the canvas to the right of the orders table. The edit relationships window appears. Relationships define how tables relate to one another. Relationships dynamically adjust the SQL join type applied between tables based on the fields used in your visualizations. You relate tables based on common fields. Here, the order ID is the common field. Additional performance option settings are available. For now, keep the default settings and close the Edit Relationships window. On the canvas, the noodle represents the relationship between the tables. Hover over the noodle to display a summary of the relationship. Double-click on the noodle to reopen the Edit Relationships window as needed. Rename the data source as Sample Superstore. You have now finished creating a Tableau data source. At the bottom left, click on Sheet 1 to proceed. From the File menu, select Save As. Name the workbook Executive Overview and save it in the default project. This is the workspace area. The left sidebar is currently open to the data pane. The data pane displays all the fields from the data source. The fields are grouped by data source table. Within each table, there is a horizontal line. The fields that are above the line are called dimensions. Dimensions are fields that contain qualitative and descriptive values, such as names, dates, or geographic data. ID fields are also dimensions. Below each table's horizontal line are fields that are called measures. Measures are fields that contain numeric, quantitative values that can be aggregated using functions, such as sum and average. Dimensions control the level of aggregation of the measures in a visualization. Dimensions can be organized into hierarchies. Create a product hierarchy. Add dimensions to the hierarchy using the context menus. Alternatively, use drag and drop to add dimensions to a hierarchy or to create a new hierarchy. Create a location hierarchy and add dimensions to it.
Hide fields that you do not plan to use. You can group fields by folder and then create folders to organize them. Drag fields from the data pane to the shelves and cards to build each visualization. The largest area of the workspace is the view. The view is where your data visualization displays. You build one visualization per sheet. At the bottom of the workspace, use the Sheet tabs to add additional sheets. Combine sheets to create dashboards and stories. At the top of the workspace, use the toolbar to access commands and analysis and navigation tools. At the bottom, right-click on the sheet name and rename it as Profit Ratio by Geography. In the data pane, use the drop-down menu to create a new calculated field called Profit Ratio. You create calculated fields using fields that already exist in your data source. Depending on the fields and formula you use, the calculated field can serve as a dimension or a measure. Calculated fields appear in the data pane and have an equal sign in the icon next to them. One way to create a view is by using Show Me. In the data pane, select multiple fields while holding down the Control or Command key on your keyboard. Then, at the top right, click on Show Me to see a list of common visualization types as well as a recommended visualization type. Select the map. Hover over the map to reveal the tooltip. The number format for profit ratio should be a percentage. In the Marks card, select the context menu for profit ratio and then format number. Adjust the number formatting. The tooltip shows the applied numbered formatting. From within the Marks card, click on Color. Click on Edit Color and adjust the color palette of the map. Use Stepped Color to group values into uniform bins of color. Use the advanced settings to set the endpoint values for the palette. The legend reflects the color settings. You can use the map controls to zoom in and out, pan, make selections, and search for locations. Focus on a subset of the data by applying filtering. One method of filtering is to drag fields to the filter shelf. Show a filter to make it interactive. Adjust the filter card settings to control the filter's appearance and functionality. For a field that is not within the filter shelf, use its Show Filter option to display its interactive filter. An area chart is a line chart where the area between the line and the axis is shaded with a color. Area charts are typically used to represent accumulated totals over time and are a conventional way to display stacked lines. When working with date fields, the field is automatically modified to reflect the default date level. To change the date level of a field that you have added to the view, Select its context menu and then select either a date part, a date value, or an exact date. You can set fields as discrete or continuous. Discrete fields are colored blue and create headers. Most dimensions are discrete fields. Continuous fields are colored green and create axes. Most measures are continuous. You will often want to set date fields as continuous to keep your dates in chronological order. Edit the axis of a continuous field to change the axis range, scale, title, or tick marks.
Hold down the control or command key on your keyboard to select both a dimension and a measure. Then use the context menu to create a level of detail expression. This fixed level of detail expression always computes the sum of profit at the order ID level regardless of the dimensions that are present in the view. Add comments to calculated fields. Use two forward slashes to add a single line comment or use a combination of forward slashes and asterisks to add a multi-line comment. For a discrete dimension, edit aliases to change the labels of its members. You can set a default sort order for the values within a categorical field so that every time you use the field in the view, the values will be sorted correctly. You can control whether marks in the view are stacked or overlapping from the analysis menu. When set to automatic, the check mark indicates whether the marks are stacked or overlapping. Using the icon at the top of the legend, you can enable legend highlighting to highlight related marks in the view. Tooltips are additional data details that display when you hover over one or more marks in the view. From the Marks card, you can edit the tooltip to include both static and dynamic text. Use the Insert menu to add dynamic text such as field values, sheet properties, and more. Format the tooltip as desired. Dates can be filtered in a variety of ways. Range of dates allows you to specify a start date and end date for the range. Show the filter to make it interactive. Duplicate a sheet to create a copy that you can modify without affecting the original sheet. Replace a field currently on the columns or rows shelf by dragging and dropping another field on top of it. Text tables are also known as cross tabs or pivot tables. First, create a couple of calculated fields that will be used within our text table. Within the data pane are two automatically generated fields. Measure Names is a discrete field that contains the names of all the measures in the data pane. Measure Values contains a list of all the continuous measure values. A typical text table has fields on both the rows and column shelves. However, this text table is designed to show the aggregated measure values as text underneath of the measure names column headings. Use the Measure Values card to remove any measures you do not want to display. Alternatively, drag Measure Names to the Filter shelf and edit the filter. The Measure Values card lists the measures in the data source with their default aggregations. Rearrange the order of the measures in the Measure Values card to rearrange their order in the view.
Adjust each measure's aggregation as needed. Format each measure to control the number type and display format. Edit a worksheet title to make it different than the worksheet name. Use bar charts to compare data across categories. Hover over the numerical axis to cause the sort icon to appear. Click on the sort icon multiple times to toggle between ascending, descending, or the original sort order. From the data pane, drag profit ratio to the color shelf and then apply color formatting. Within the marks card, click on label and show mark labels. Adjust the number formatting. For the measure on the column shelf, deselect Show Header to remove the header from the x-axis. Disable the tooltip so that it doesn't appear when you hover over the bars. To use the bar chart within the tooltip of the map, click over to the worksheet containing the map. The map currently displays the default tooltip. From the Marks card, click on Tooltip. Erase the default tooltip. Insert a combination of static and dynamic text. To cause the bar chart to appear within the tooltip, insert the sheet containing the bar chart. Format the tooltip as desired. Hover over the map to see the viz in tooltip. Create a dashboard so you can see and interact with all your views in one place. Choose from the many dashboard size options. Device-specific layouts can be added and customized as well. To keep objects from overlapping, select a tiled layout. Alternatively, select a floating layout. A best practice is to add horizontal and vertical layout containers to the dashboard and then to place related sheets and other objects within them. Click over to the Layout pane to locate the item hierarchy. The item hierarchy shows the organizational structure of the objects within the dashboard. Use the item hierarchy to easily select dashboard objects. Remove unnecessary and redundant objects. By default, a filter only applies to the worksheet from which it came. Modify a filter's settings to apply the filter to additional worksheets. Then confirm that the filtering is working as expected. Repeat this process for other filters. Drag filters to rearrange their order. Drag one layout container into another layout container to reposition all of its objects. Add context and interactivity to your dashboard by using actions. Add a filter action so that selecting a state on the map will filter the text table and area charts to reflect only that state.
Choose whether to show or hide individual worksheet titles within the dashboard. Edit titles to change their wording. In addition to static text, insert dynamic text to provide more meaningful worksheet titles. Save the completed dashboard. Close the workbook to leave edit mode. Welcome to this video on getting started with Tableau Prep. You can download the dataset and packaged flow file underneath the video to follow along in your own copy of Tableau Prep. We're working with data for best-selling books. Tableau Prep makes it easy to get your data ready for analysis. With the same highly interactive drag-and-drop interactions you're used to, Tableau Prep can be used to combine, clean, and shape your data exactly how you want it. Preparing data is done by building a flow, made up of steps such as cleaning, pivoting, or aggregating data. Tableau Desktop works best with data that is tidy in structure. That is, the data should be in rows and columns, and each row should represent one item of data, and each column should be one attribute. How do we get our data that way using Tableau Prep? Let's jump in. First, we'll connect to the data set. Our best seller data is in Excel. We'll connect to the American Booksellers Association bestseller lists from February 28th. Here in the Connections pane, we see the list of tables, or sheet tabs, in the data set. We'll drag out a table, and now we have our first step in the flow. The input step is configurable below. We can bring in every sheet in the file by using a wildcard union and leaving the matching pattern blank. Over on the right, we can see a list of the fields we'll bring in from these tables. Everything looks good. Up in the flow pane, we can rename this step by double-clicking and typing a name. Let's call this February 28th. To add another step in the flow, we'll click the plus button. We want just a basic cleaning step to start. This will let us see the state of our data and what we might need to do to clean it. Below the flow pane, we now see the profile pane and data grid. The profile pane shows a card for each field in the data set, and the cards display the values in each field, as well as distribution information about how frequently each value appears. By clicking on a bar, we can highlight related values in other fields. The Info field has multiple pieces of information in one column. If we look down in the data grid, which shows a more row-level representation of the data, we can see that this field has a pipe between title and author, then a dollar sign before the price, and a pipe and ISBN. We can split these values out into unique columns, as we want for analysis. Click on the card and open the menu. There are multiple cleaning options here, but we'll choose Automatic Split. Tableau Prep is smart enough to recognize common delimiters, even when they're different, and we'll split these out for four new columns. Renaming the new fields is as easy as double-clicking and typing the desired name. We no longer need the original info field, so we can remove it. 
We can also split this field and remove the original. Now we have all the distinct columns we want. Price is currently a string data type, but it should be a decimal number. We can click on the data type icon and choose number, decimal. We have more weeks worth of data, so let's add them to the flow. We can connect to new data. It can be from any source, but ours happens to be another Excel file. We'll bring in a table, select Wildcard Union, and now we have our second data source. To combine two steps in the flow, simply drag one onto the other and select Join or Union. Here we have the same column structures, so we want to union. We can verify that everything matches up correctly. Now we simply need to make sure that the cleaning we did is applied to the results from the union, not the first data set alone. We can right-click on the line and select Remove, then drag the union step to the cleaning step. That's all it takes. Our data is prepared and ready for use, so let's create an output step. We'll click the plus and add an output. We'll choose a CSV format, and we can choose where to save the file and what to name it. Now when we run the flow, we generate a new file. Tableau Prep does not write back to the original data source. This new file contains all of the data as we cleaned and combined it. We're ready for analysis. Flows in Tableau Prep can be simple or complex, and each type of step has robust options. Thank you for watching this video on getting started with Tableau Prep. We invite you to continue with the other free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on getting started with Tableau Prep Conductor. Tableau Prep Conductor is an add-on to Tableau Server that enables us to keep our data fresh by scheduling our published flows to run automatically. Tableau Prep Conductor also enables us to monitor, administer, and govern our flows. To use Tableau Prep Conductor, we create a flow in Tableau Prep Builder, publish the flow to Tableau Server, and then create a task in Tableau Server to schedule our flow. You can download the package flow file underneath this video to follow along. We are using the Sales Performance Flow. To learn about Tableau Prep Conductor, let's start by opening an existing flow in Tableau Prep Builder. This flow brings in data for regional orders, returns, and quotas. The data in these sources is neither clean nor consistent. Tableau Prep Builder enables us to perform steps to clean, shape, and combine our data to prepare it for analysis. One or more output steps define where the results of the flow will be published. Now that we understand our flow, let's examine our need for scheduling. Each day, new data is added to the orders, returns, and quota data sources. This new data needs to run through the data preparation steps of our flow each day. Rather than manually publishing our flow each day, let's use Tableau Prep Conductor to schedule our flow to run on a daily basis. From within Tableau Prep Builder, let's sign in to Tableau Server. Before we publish our flow to Tableau Server, let's set our two output steps to also publish to Tableau Server. We click on our Create Superstore Sales output step, expand the output pane, and set the output to publish as a data source. Next, we select the server we just signed into and the desired project, output name, and description. We keep the output pane open and move on to our second output step. For the Create Annual Regional Performance Output step, we set the output to publish as a data source. We select the server we are signed into and the desired project, output name, and description. Now that we have defined our output steps, we minimize the output pane. Let's publish our flow to Tableau Server so that we can schedule it to run. From the Server menu, we select Publish Flow. Next, we select the desired project and flow name. Let's edit our file connections. 
we'll select Upload to package our six source files into the published flow. A direct connection enables the files to be refreshed, but requires Tableau Server to have access to the locations of our source files. Let's publish our flow. Tableau Server now shows us the flow we just published. On this overview tab, we see our two output steps above the published flow. Let's create a new task to schedule our flow. We can create separate tasks for each output, but in our case, we'll schedule both outputs to run at the same time. Let's schedule our outputs to run daily at 11 a.m. Rather than waiting until that time, let's run our flow now. While our flow is running, let's take a look at the other tabs of our flow workspace. The Connections tab is where we can see and edit the connections for each of our input and output steps. The Scheduled Tasks tab is where we can add new tasks and modify existing tasks. Here we see the task we just scheduled to run daily at 11 a.m. The Run History tab shows us the status for the flow we just ran. Both our output steps succeeded. The Run History will grow as our flow runs each day at 11 a.m. We can also see the revision history of our flow. If a flow fails, an error message will appear next to the failure status, and we will receive an email notifying us of the flow failure. When we explore all data sources, we see the two outputs of our flow. When our flow runs as scheduled, daily at 11 a.m., these two data sources will be updated with fresh data. Workbooks based on these data sources will display the fresh data as well. When we explore all flows, we see the flow we just published and scheduled. As the owner of the flow, we can assign permissions to other users who may want to run or edit our flow. Currently, all users can view and save our flow. We can set custom permissions or choose from the predefined options. Tableau Server Administrators can monitor the real-time status of the processes running in Tableau Server. Both Tableau Server Administrators and Tableau Site Administrators can monitor flow activity and performance using administrative views. Tableau Server Administrators can create schedules that others may use to schedule their flows. For additional help on the use of Tableau Prep Conductor, please visit onlinehelp.tableau.com. Thank you for watching this video on Tableau Prep Conductor. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to this video on relationships. You can download the Excel spreadsheet below to follow along in your own copy of Tableau Desktop. In this video, we will define relationships, we will discuss our business scenario and its corresponding data model diagram, we will then use this diagram to build a Tableau data source that includes relationships. Once we've built our data source, we'll use it to answer some important business questions. Along the way, we'll learn various aspects of the interface and the functionality of key features. This will include looking at the layout of the data pane, exploring how to show or hide null values, creating calculations using fields from multiple tables, and using the auto-generated count fields. Lastly, we'll fine-tune our performance options settings, such as cardinality and referential integrity. What are relationships? Relationships are the noodles that connect related tables on the Tableau data source page. They define how data source tables relate to one another based on common fields. Relationships provide several key benefits. A single data source can answer a wide variety of business questions. Relationships also enable an intuitive analytics experience for all types of users. Data sources are easy to create and are optimized for efficiency, leading to fast reporting. Before jumping into Tableau Desktop, let's familiarize ourselves with our business scenario. We own a convenience store. We want to analyze our transaction data to answer business questions. Our convenience store sells eight products. Each product has a unique product ID, a product name, unit price, and unit cost. 
Each product falls into one category. Each category has many products. The line between the tables signifies this one-to-many relationship. The two tables relate based on a common field, category ID. Many transactions occur each day. Each transaction has a unique transaction ID. Some customers use our reward card system during a transaction. This provides us with a partial list of customers. Doug was a repeat customer in transactions 1 and 3. Transaction 4 had an unknown customer. There is a one-to-many relationship between the customer table and the transaction table. The two tables relate based on a common field, customer ID. How do transactions and products relate? A transaction can have many products. A product can appear in many transactions. This is a many-to-many -many relationship. Since there is no common field between the two tables, good database design would resolve this issue by adding a transaction detail table in the middle. Transaction ID combined with product ID uniquely identify each row. The quantity sold is also recorded. During transaction one, two magazines and one water were purchased. The many-to-many -many relationship between the transaction table and the product table has been replaced by two one-to-many relationships. Now that we understand our data model diagram, let's build this out in Tableau Desktop. Open Tableau Desktop. On the Start page, connect to a Microsoft Excel file. Select the Convenient Store spreadsheet and select Open. On the Data Source page, our five tables are located on the left. We'll start by bringing in our most detailed level table. Drag the Transaction Details table to the canvas. A preview of the table's contents will appear below. As we bring in the remaining tables one by one, our data source will resemble our data model diagram rotated by 90 degrees. Drag the Product table onto the canvas to the right of the Transaction Details table. Notice the noodle that represents the relationship between the two tables. The Edit Relationship window will appear. Tableau Desktop has automatically related the two tables based on a common field, Product ID. We could also manually select the common fields. There are Performance Options settings available. For now, we'll use the default settings. Close the Edit Relationship window. From the left, drag the Transactions table onto the canvas to the right of the Transaction Details table. Confirm that the tables are related based on transaction ID. Close the Edit Relationship window. From the left, drag the Category table onto the canvas to the right of the Product table. Let's see what happens if we accidentally connect it to the wrong table. Notice the warning that there is no common field between the two tables. To fix our drag and drop mistake, close the Edit Relationship window then use the drop-down of the category table and select Move To and then Product to move the category table to the right of the product table. The tables will relate based on the common field, Category ID. Close the Edit Relationship window. Lastly, drag the Customer table onto the canvas to the right of the Transaction table. The tables will relate based on the common field, Customer ID. Close the Edit Relationship window. From the File menu, select Save. We'll save as type Tableau Packaged Workbook so as to embed the data within the workbook. Name the file as Convenience Store. Click Save. Click on Sheet 1. On the left is the data pane. Notice that the fields are organized by table. Within each table, a horizontal line separates the dimensions from the measures. Each table contains an automatically generated field that is a count of the number of rows in the table. Let's format unit cost and unit price as currency. For each, use the drop-down, Default Properties, Number Format, Currency Standard, and click OK. Save the workbook. Let's answer a few business questions. Question one, what were our best and worst selling products? 
also display the product IDs. From the product table, drag product name to the rows. From the transaction details table, drag quantity sold to the columns. Sort by quantity sold in descending order. Set the fit to entire view. Our best selling product was water. Our worst selling products were pencils and pens, which were not sold in any transactions. To limit the results to products that actually sold, click on the two nulls indicator and then on filter data. This filters quantity sold to non-null values only. Let's undo this filter since the unsold items are important to see. Let's move on to displaying the product ID. It is a common field between the product table and the transaction details table. It matters which table we drag product ID in from. If we drag it in from the transaction details table, we will only see the six products that were sold. Let's instead drag the product ID in from the product table. This displays the complete list of products. Sort the bar chart again. Rename the sheet as best and worst selling products. Save the workbook. Open a new worksheet. Question two. What was the contribution margin per product? Contribution margin equals unit price minus unit cost. Let's create a calculated field. Name it contribution margin. From the product table, drag in unit price. Type a minus sign, then drag in unit cost. Click OK. Notice that contribution margin appears within the product table. That is because it is based on fields that come from that one table only. Let's format contribution margin as currency standard. We will validate our calculation by creating a text table. Hold down the control or command key on your keyboard while selecting product name, contribution margin, unit cost, and unit price. At the top right, click on Show Me. Select Text Table, and then click Show Me again to close it. From the toolbar, change the fit from Standard to Entire View. On the Measure Value shelf, rearrange the measures into the following order. Unit Price, Unit Cost, Contribution Margin. We can clearly see that Unit Price minus Unit Cost is leading to correct contribution margin values for each product. Rename the sheet as Contribution Margin Per Product. Save the workbook. Open a new worksheet. Question 3. What were the sales revenue, profit, and profit margin per category and product? We'll create three calculated fields. Name the first one Sales Revenue. From the Transaction Details table, drag in Quantity Sold. Type an asterisk which is the multiplication symbol. Then, from the product table, drag in unit price. Click OK. The new sales revenue measure appears at the bottom of the data pane. That is because it is based on fields from multiple tables and therefore cannot be placed within any one table above. Format sales revenue as currency standard. The second calculated field we will create is profit. From the transaction details table, drag in quantity sold. Type an asterisk, then from the product table, drag in contribution margin. Click OK. Profit also appears at the bottom of the data pane since it uses fields from multiple tables. Format profit as currency standard. The third calculated field we will create is profit margin. The formula is the sum of profit divided by the sum of sales revenue. This is an aggregate calculation because we are using the sum aggregation within the formula. It's important here to sum before dividing instead of the other way around to avoid incorrect profit margin percentages that would sum to greater than 100%. Click OK. Aggregate calculations always appear at the bottom of the data pane. Format profit margin as a percentage with one decimal place. We will validate our numbers in a text table. Hold down the control or command key on your keyboard while selecting category name, product name, profit, profit margin, and sales revenue. 
At the top right, click on Show Me. Select Text Table and then click Show Me again to close it. From the toolbar, change the fit from Standard to Entire View. On the Measure Value shelf, rearrange the measures into the following order. Profit, Sales Revenue, Profit Margin. Notice that the profit divided by the sales revenue is leading to correct profit margin percentages for each product. To confirm that the percentages are correct at the category level, go to the Analysis menu, Totals, and add all subtotals. The subtotal values are correct. Let's also show column grand totals. The grand total values are also correct. Rename the sheet as Profit, Sales Revenue, and Profit Margin per category and product. Save the workbook. Open a new worksheet. Question 4. Who were our most frequent customers? From the Customer table, drag Customer Name to the rows. From the Transaction table, drag the automatically generated Transaction Count field to the columns. Sort by Transaction Count in descending order. We see that Doug was our most frequent customer. Additionally, the unknown customer from transaction number 4 is included in our comparison. Rename the sheet as Count of Transactions per Customer. Save the workbook. Open a new worksheet. Question 5. Who were our most profitable customers? This question brings together data from four of our five tables. From the Customer table, Drag Customer Name to the rows. From the bottom of the data pane, drag Profit to the columns. Sort by Profit in descending order. We see that Doug was our most profitable customer. Rename the sheet as Profit per Customer. Save the workbook. Open a new worksheet. Question 6. From which categories did each customer purchase, and in what quantity? This question brings together data from all five of our tables. From the Customer table, drag Customer Name to the rows. From the Category table, drag Category Name onto the rows to the right of Customer Name. From the Transaction Details table, drag Quantity Sold to the columns. Sort by Quantity Sold in descending order. The results correctly reflect all the transactions that occurred. Rename the sheet as Quantity Sold per Customer and Category. Save the workbook. Performance options are optional settings we can specify when defining relationships between tables. The default settings ensure that no data goes missing in our visualizations. We can adjust the settings to improve performance. We define the settings based on our data model diagram and our business rules. Consider the following questions regarding our business rules. Can a customer have no transactions? Can a transaction have no customer? Can two customers split a transaction? Can a category have no products? Can a product have no category? Can a product be in multiple categories? Since Tableau Desktop cannot assume the answers to these questions, it must consider all of these options to be valid. Let's define our business rules so as to maximize query performance. We will define these business rules as we adjust our performance option settings. One category can have many products. A product belongs to one category only. Some categories have products. This means that a new category can be added before assigning products to it. All products must belong to a category listed in the category table. One customer can complete many transactions. A transaction is completed by one customer only. Therefore, two customers cannot split a transaction. All customers have completed at least one transaction. Some transactions were completed by customers listed in the customer table. Other transactions were not. One transaction can have many transaction details. A transaction detail belongs to one transaction only. All transactions have transaction details. All transaction details belong to a transaction listed in the transaction table. One product can appear in many transaction details. Each transaction detail contains one product only. Some products appear in a transaction detail. Some products, such as pencils and pens, do not. All transaction details contain a product listed in the product table. The performance of our workbook is now improved, 
and the results in our visualizations are still the same. For additional help on the use of relationships, please visit help.tableau.com. Thank you for watching this video on relationships. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to Getting Started with Mapping in Tableau. This video covers the various options for mapping and using background images in Tableau Desktop. At its core, geographical analysis comes down to plotting points. The map image provides the background and coordinates are plotted on it. Latitude indicates how far up or down from the equator. Longitude indicates how far east or west from the prime meridian. Any point on a map can be represented with latitude and longitude coordinates. In Tableau, coordinates need to be in decimal format. Positive latitudes indicate the northern hemisphere. Positive longitudes indicate eastward from the prime meridian. In this way, every point on the globe has unique latitude and longitude coordinates. Incidentally, Tableau uses the same projection as Google Maps, which is Web Mercator. If your dataset has latitude and longitude fields, Tableau can automatically plot them on a map. On the other hand, if your data doesn't have latitude and longitude, but you have geographic place names, such as city, country, or province, Tableau will determine their coordinates and provide the fields latitude generated and longitude generated. If your data contains locations without latitude and longitude coordinates that Tableau cannot recognize, you can add to the database and enter your own custom geocoding, or simply blend in the geographic data. The videos, expanding Tableau's mapping capabilities, and custom geocoding go into more depth. Locations can be plotted on a map in two ways, as a point or mark to represent the entire area, or a polygon covering the area. Tableau has polygon data, or filled maps, for many geographic locations built in. It's also possible to provide your own polygon data to create custom polygon maps, such as this map of national parks in the UK. Check out the Polygon Maps video for more information, including creating custom territories on maps. If the default map tiles aren't what you need, maybe your analysis is of ocean currents, Tableau offers the option for connecting to Mapbox or a web map service. There's a video on each of these options. If you need to do something like plot the location of cavities on a dental chart, you can upload an image directly and assign it coordinates, as shown in the background images video. The options for geographic analysis in Tableau are extensive and powerful. There are many options for customization to make sure your analysis needs are met. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau. Welcome to getting started with calculations in Tableau. You can download the exercise workbook to follow along in your own copy of Tableau. Similarly to formulas in Excel, calculations allow you to manipulate your data in any number of ways. Creating a calculated field is as easy as right-clicking in the data pane and selecting Create Calculated Field. Functions in Tableau fall into one of several main categories, number, string, date, etc. Calculated fields are created by defining a formula using these functions or basic operations. Let's create a simple logical calculation on our profit field as an example. If sum of profit is greater than zero, then positive, else negative, end. I'm ignoring if profits are actually zero for simplicity's sake, and we'll name this sign of profit. Note that there's an equal sign in front of the field here. This indicates it's a calculated field, not natively from the data source. If we bring this calculated field to color, we see that our profit bars are colored appropriately. If we want to see what our costs are, defined as sales minus profit, we can add that to the view very simply by double-clicking and typing it directly into the shelf itself. 
Note that autocomplete pops up as I type, and I can hit Enter to select. We can also drag in a field from the data pane and hit Enter. And there we have the calculations results visualized, and we have a new pill with our formula. If this is a calculation that we find useful and want to keep, we can simply drag the pill into the data pane, and we can always rename the field if desired. While learning about how Tableau handles calculations, a really important concept is the distinction between regular calculations versus what we call table calculations. A regular calculation, such as sales minus profit, is passed as part of the query that Tableau asks of the data source, and the computation is handled by the data source itself, with only the result set being returned to Tableau. A table calculation is a secondary calculation that is performed on top of the returned result set. This computation is done within Tableau. An example here is running total of sales. A table calculation is indicated by the delta symbol on the pill. Table calculations can either be written like any other calculation, using the table calc functions in the calculation editor, or there is a set of predefined, commonly used computations called quick table calculations. These include options like running total, percent of total, and year over year growth. Which ones are available depend on the data in your view. See the video on table calculations for more specific information. Thank you for watching this calculations training video. We invite you to continue with the free training videos to learn more about using Tableau.